Big things cost more, right? Just like a house, must cost more than a car. But in PC gaming, things just get reversed. Motherboards come in various sizes. They can be humongous like the Excel ADX boards or as small as the one that is powering your Apple Watch. Smaller size means less computing prowess, right? But in one scenario, this logic just gets reversed. I mean, smaller size but more performance. I am talking about the spicy ITX motherboards. Yes, they are expensive and yes, they are targeted towards a very niche audience. But they are better than staple ATX and micro ATX boards in so many ways. First of all, a smaller size does mean that data has to travel lesser distance. Thus, ITX boards are the best for memory overclocking. Oh, and before I continue, thanks to Hardware Corpus for lending a PSU and an SSD. Otherwise, this video wouldn't have been possible. Also, the smaller form factor does mean that these bills fit into every corner of your room. Just for a bit of a backstory here, a chipset manufacturer called VIA Technologies created ITX in 2001 to power information PCs. That means ITX boards were designed to power systems whose main task was infotainment, and thus the name Information Technology Extended or ITX. However, lately, the industry has started to prefer ITX for aesthetics. That is seen from the fact that all ITX cases have a strong focus on the design, starting from the NZXT H1 to the Fractal Design era. That was quite a spoiler. However, ITX has a problem. Now look, ITX is a very sophisticated design, and designing them is challenging. Now I say this because engineers have to fit as much as possible within a very small area of 170 by 170 mm. It is not just standard ATX formula, but innovation just stands for better heat sinks, more power phases, or a special camo to make the board look cool. It is rethinking the entire design. And that means more dollars. However, the latest market trend does mean that ITX has become a rather interesting platform. Normal people don't build ITX PCs, and people who do know their stuff. Roll in today's superstar, the MSI MPG B560i Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. Thank you MSI for sending this over, I promise I didn't break anything this time around. MSI is one of the big boys out there. Their MPG or MSI Performance Gaming is pretty much what the name suggests. It is a very good blend between performance and pricing, just like this B560i board. I like the way MSI has packaged this board. It comes in a box with rather interesting designs on it. Open it up and you get the motherboard packed in an anti-static bag. But this is not even half the story. After you take the motherboard out, you get a plethora of stuff that accompanies it. Starting from standard stuff like M.2 standoffs and boring user manuals, you get stuff like two dipole antennas. Oh, and talking about antennas, this motherboard supports Wi-Fi 6E via an onboard card. This causes the need for having an Ethernet cable sneak up behind your build and it reduces the need of one wire. Pretty neat. But that's not the end. You get SATA cables, product promos, an RGB extension cable, and a very unique gift. A pair of screwdrivers, one of which is a Phillips head and the other is a flat head. Now this is why I love MSI. They don't leave any stone unturned. Okay, let's have a look at this engineering marvel. It follows a strong monotone design. Look at this interesting thing. The branding is distributed around the board. The MSI logo is on the IO shield. As we go clockwise, we get MPG up top, then we have the edge branding right over where the B560 chipset sits. That pretty much makes up the name of this board. I don't know how many people will notice it, but this is really dope. The small form factor of this motherboard does mean that the CPU socket is in the spotlight here. It is the LG A1200 and due to how large this socket is physically, we get only one PCIe X16 slot. And that slot is still riveted to the board to prevent heavy graphics cards from bending it. 
You also get an integrated IO shield that mostly has USB 2.0 ports. Now this is understandable. This is an ITX build and you will prefer aesthetics over anything. So it is very common that you will use wireless stuff and in that scenario USB 2.0 ports will help in cost reduction. You can just save a little bit more money. That does not mean that USB 3.0 is overlooked. You get two USB 3.2 Gen 1 X1 ports and one of them is Type-C. However, the lack of a USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 port is concerning. The motherboard is based on a 6 plus 2 plus 1 digital VRM design that is backed by a decent heatsink mass of 192 grams. Don't get me wrong, the heatsinks aren't big. You shouldn't expect heavy heatsinks on an ITX board either. However, these are decent enough and will get the job done easily. Okay, now let's move on and see what makes the B560i so special. MSI has done everything to fit as much as possible into this small area. You have three fan headers up top and that is above the heatsink. The front panel headers are placed in a rather weird position just over the PCIe X16 slot. And best of all, look at these SATA headers. You have two of them in the extreme right and the other two is placed just between the dim slots and the primary M.2 slot. Oh, and talking about the M.2 slot. Check this out, MSI has placed it right above the B560 chipset. So this heatsink doubles up for both the B560 chipset and the SSD. It has two DIMM slots and that is pretty standard for ITX boards. But even after fitting so many stuff, this motherboard can fit regular coolers just fine. Here is a cooler mount, just check out how easily it fits. This is some clever engineering from MSI's half. ITX boards normally have a large number of PCB layers and this B560i is no exception. It has 8 PCB layers. Just for a little comparison, only the top tier motherboards based on the Z590 chipset have 8 or more PCB layers. This does mean that this motherboard has some serious business going on. But I saved the most interesting stuff for the end. You see a regular M.2 slot up top here, right? Another one is present at the back of the motherboard. I am thoroughly impressed. Okay, now let's talk a bit about myself. I am a big RGB fan. My entire build is full unicorn puke. And the B560i satisfied that fetish of mine, not using one, but two RGB headers. The first header is of the 5V 3-pin addressable RGB type which MSI likes to call the J Rainbow port. The other port is a 12 volt 4 pin RGB header which MSI calls the JRGB header and it supports colors of only a single type. Uh, we, we don't do that here. It's all about addressable RGB. I did connect my memory modules and an RGB fan to check out how good the RGB control was. All MSI motherboards come with the new MSI center software which is supposed to be a lot better than their old Dragon Center software. I talked about this in my Clutch GM11 review as well, but RGB control lacks. It is not as customizable as some other software like Razer Synapse or Corsair IQ. You get a very few options here and dynamic effects like the music sync aren't impressive at all. It is just a single color sync which means that components will alter their brightness according to the audio output of your system. This is nowhere close to Razer Synapse's customization options when it comes to music sync. I thought MSI Center will be a lot better than Dragon Center, but at this point, it just seems like a reskinned version of the latter. MSI did remove the bloatware problem, but come on guys, catch up with the competition. Alright, enough talking about the board. Now let's test the highlight feature of both this chipset and the form factor, memory overclocking. Well, I'll be using an Intel Core i5-10400, which does not have a very decent IMC, a Thermaltake UX200 cooler, which isn't very decent, but well, it is enough for a 10.4, the B560i board, of course, and a dedicated GPU. I know that the 10.4 has an iGPU, but when we get to extreme overclocking, the video memory used by the iGPU also gets overclocked, and that at times causes fuzzy displays and even no displays at all. I don't want such problems, so just stick in a fairly inexpensive RX 560 here. It's not a very good GPU, but it is decent enough to give a 1080p display. 
For the PSU, we will use the Antec CSK 550 watts, which coincidentally also has a yellow accent all over it. Anyways, it is an 80 plus bronze power supply and it will be good enough to power this build. The storage part will be taken care by the WD Black SN750 500GB NVMe SSD. You could say that I can go for SATA SSDs, but hey, it cuts the need of wires, right? I'm going to be serious. For the memory, we will be using two kits here. One of them is the XPG Spectrix D40, which is originally clocked at 2400MHz at CL17. Well, that might not be good on paper and you might just be mad at me. But hold on, the only reason I have not thrown these kits to this date is because they can overclock like crazy. Our second kit will be the XPG Spectrix D41, which is originally clocked at 3200MHz at CL16. The setup will be in open air so that we get more consistent test results. Let's start with the D40. It made its way up to 3333 MHz at CL16 on my B450 board that I daily drive. That was crazy! But let's see how far these memory sticks get with the B560i. Starting, the frequencies looked promising and they were quite ideal to the ones I got with the B450. However, after I hit the 3333 MHz mark, Settings started to get a bit fuzzy. The memory kit started failing Linpack Extreme stress results, although IDA continuously reported performance gains. IDA is flawed. Anyways, I won't blame the memory sticks for these, it is already a 933 MHz offset. That is lot at just CL16. Anyways, we got to a maximum of 3468 MHz on these 2400 kits, and that may sound dope, but there is a catch. The timings were pretty loose. I am talking CL 25, 25, 25, 42 here. However, at this point, I was neither chasing performance nor system stability. It was just a game of hitting the highest possible frequencies on these memory kits. Moving on, the D41 was disappointing. It could not scale very well with tight timings, and that was a bit concerning because this kit is based on Micron's eDie. eDie is supposed to be Micron's best. I don't know what got wrong here. The kit only made to DDR4-3400 at CL16. After that, the timings had to be loosened significantly to get to higher frequencies. That was a long night of loosening timings. Anyways, after a while, the RAM kits hit 3600 MHz at CL24-24-24-41. This wasn't impressive at all and the kit kept failing Linpack Extreme stress results. Even Ida started reporting performance losses. The story from here is rather frustrating. We had a large number of boot failures. However, one feature of the B560i did really help me a lot. The board has four onboard LEDs. These include a CPU debug LED, one for RAM, one for VGA or your graphics card, and another one for boot or for your storage. This did mean that I didn't have to make wild guesses guessing why the computer did not start up. Quite sweet, I would say. Anyways, after I got to 3866MHz, I forgot about performance gains and system stability. It was just a game of hitting the highest possible frequency that this kit can get to. And we finally got to 4133MHz at CL26262643. Yes, you heard me right, CL26. There is a reason to be mad at the RAM sticks, but hey, they did well, at least in the frequency part. Now you might have one question, did I try 4200MHz or did I just give up? The answer is yes, I tried. And it ended up corrupting Windows 10. At this point, it already was 3 am in the morning and I was not in a mood to reinstall Windows and get going again. So I called it a day. Overall, overclocking on the B560i was a really enjoyable experience. Overclocking is enjoyable anyways, but the debug LEDs did really help me a lot. The results would have been better if we were using some better RAM sticks like the Trident Z Royal or something like that, but hey, these are impressive results. But I'm sure these results will become irrelevant with the upcoming DDR5 memory standards. I can't guarantee whether this video will be future proof or not. Anyways, DDR5 is finally here and I am excited for it. The Z690 boards just launched a few days back and man, just look at few of the launches, especially from companies like MSI and ASUS. I was looking at the Z690 Ace board from MSI, and man, 
I have never seen these many M.2 slots ever before. This board is such a wonderful mix of aesthetics and features. Oh and hey MSI, if you're watching this video, do send that board over. I would really love overclocking the 12900K on that beast. Also, considering that Z690 boards are already here, the B660 boards will be here anytime within the upcoming months. This does make recommending the B560i a bit difficult. The current gen AMD processors significantly outperform their Intel counterparts. So investing your money on the B560i might not be the best decision at this point. The board is solid, but if you are an overclocking enthusiast, please do not waste your money on this board. And by this board, I mean the entire B560 platform. Does it even make sense to spend a lot of money and then you get some stuff where you can alter just a few of the settings? No, right? Get an unlocked CPU on the Z platform probably. And even better, if you are on a budget, look at AMD's B series. There are some very good offerings there. Anyways, if you are looking forward to build an information PC, go for this board. It will be way overkill for infotainment, but hey, it will get the job done. And if you're planning to build a small form factor gaming PC, better do not buy this motherboard. You can consider other options in the market or better, just wait for B660. Although ITX motherboards on the LGA 1700 socket might not even see the light of the day, that socket is huge and making an ITX motherboard on that socket is going to be a challenge. Anyways, if you finally decided on this motherboard, go overclock your memory on these. Overclocking your memory increases your performance significantly. If you want to check out a full-blown tutorial on RAM overclocking, check out the video here. It has all the information you would probably ever need to get started with RAM overclocking. Do leave a like on this video and subscribe. That spoiler does mean something big.